So I've been talking about DOS denial of service in many of the previous videos. So finally we are here to see what it is. So here is the outline of this video. So we will start out with DOS basics and then we will look at DOS attacks at different layers of the protocol stack. We will focus on the network transport and application because this is where the DOS attacks are launched. We will also see solutions to how to prevent these DOS attacks. So what is DOS? DOS is a means by which you want to prevent users from accessing machines or network resources. What do I mean by this? Suppose there is a web server that is providing some web service. For example, this can be a bank, in which case it is ba providing banking services, or it can be something like Amazon, in which case it is providing some e-commerce services. The server can also be a DNS server or a DHCP server, in which case these are op offering the DNS service and the DHCP service. And your goal here would be to bring these servers down if you are launching a DOS attack. There is one other thing to keep in mind that you want to do this DOS with very little computing work. What I mean by this is often these servers will be deployed with a lot of resources. For example, a web server could be a 48 core machine with one GBPS internet access because it has to handle thousands or millions of clients. Now, as an attacker, if you want to bring this web server down and for that you yourself have to install, have to invest in a 48 core machine as well as a one GBPS internet connection or even better than this, then you have to incur a lot of expenses and that is not very easy to do. So the idea of lot of attack is to do this without you having to invest heavily in resources. So do it with little computing work. How this happens, we will see shortly. So before we proceed, one of the questions is why do why does anyone want to launch DOS attacks? We have covered this briefly earlier. So what are the reasons for this? Right, extortion, competition, political warfare. So just to drive home this point, I will present to you a few examples of the current state of the world with respect to DOS. This I mentioned earlier as well that you can buy services to launch DOS from the black market like this. So here is an example of an extortion. An attacker has contacted some victim organization and told them that if they don't pay a ransom, they are going to launch a denial of service attack. Some did not pay and thereby they launched attack where these DOS attacks clocked in a rate of 1.3 terabits per second. Imagine the, the ability to launch this type of attack. This is an example of bringing down your enemies. So distributed denial of service attacks against independent media and human rights sites. Anti-fraud site was also hit by a DDoS attack. So all these uh, attackers, because these are working against them, they just want to bring them down. So this is for bringing down enemies. This is a very interesting attack where you launch a DOS attack, let's say against a bank server. And when users are contacting this bank server, they are typing in the actual bank URL, but they are not able to get across because this is under a DOS attack. So right after this, this attacker is going to send out emails to these users, telling them that, see, we are experiencing this outage. If you want to access our services, why don't you go to this alternate URL and this alternate URL is under the attacker's control, that is Mallory's control. And thereby, this will be a phishing site. People will enter their username and passwords here and thereby Mallory will get hold of a lot of passwords. So as you can see, this is a very clever attack where DOS is made to make phishing emails look real. There is also 
attacks done for activism so again that anonymous group or other groups they were not happy with the thai thai government some criminal act so they launched an attack to bring down some websites of this thai government so this is for activism even in elections dos attacks have been used against the opponents so you can read what it is in this uh, excerpt from a news site there is also cyber warfare so for example georgia government has accused the russian government of conducting cyber warfare where they were bombarding this uh, georgian government website through this dos so these are all the reasons for why dos attacks are launched so now let's get into the detail so there are many types of dos attack we will however focus on network based dos attack so with network based dos attack you essentially target the bandwidth or the processing capacity of that machine that is connected to the internet so this typically involves some form of flooding this crashing system due to protocol implementation bugs are also possible as part of this network based attack where you are uh, some network protocol vulnerability you are using to crash that particular service you can also launch attacks based on the operating system where you exhaust resources for example you use up all disk space or open zillions of files spawn zillions of process and thereby that machine is no more use of use so here since we are not going to cover it the defense is often in isolation whatever process is running you have to ensure that it is isolated from other processes or ensure that the amount of resources you are giving it as contained so that you don't exhaust your resources you can also launch dos by leveraging some vulnerability in the software where you crash the program or system by supplying some special input this the defense is careful testing as i mentioned we will focus mainly on network based dos attacks so this is how normally the dos attacks are handled in the networking space so there is an attacker and these attacker will get hold of some machines which act as handlers and each handler in turn will handle some group of machines which are called zombies and these zombies are the ones which target the victim by bombarding it with some traffic so this is what is called a distributed denial of service attack so in this distributed denial of service attack because the victim often is powerful you also need to launch a powerful attack which by yourself it may not be possible so you tend to make use of multiple machines to overwhelm a powerful server so this is called a botnet these are available for rent cheaply and it is very difficult to stop these kinds of attacks because you are getting bombarded from machines that are spread all over the world so effective filtering is very difficult many majority websites like yahoo amazon google all have been subject to these type of dos attacks the current internet has not been designed to handle dos attacks that is the major problem these keep going on even today a few more details suppose your goal is to bring down a popular website so here is some web server and you as an attacker want to attack this and bring it down now when you want to bring it down what do you target do you target its link or process in other words this is doing some processing inside for each request that comes it does some processing and generates a reply and send backs and it is connected to the internet over some link and this link has a certain rate or speed so do you flood such that this link is saturated and thereby this is not able to send messages to other valid users or do you target the process where you are keeping it so busy that it is not able to handle genuine requests so that is the question this you have to somehow figure out now as an attacker you are sending out some traffic 
to bring this popular website down and this traffic let's say has a rate of 1 kbps this is very low rate i know but just to illustrate let's just talk about this rate now 1 kbps can be one packet per second where each packet is 1000 bits or it can be 100 packets per second where each packet is only 10 bits now if you want to saturate the link that is you are targeting the link and wanting to saturate it so that you can launch the dos would you go for this rate or this rate of packets per second right it makes sense for you to go with the larger packet bits because you are generating lesser number of packets but each packet is very big that way you can saturate the link with least effort similarly if you want to target the process which packet rate would you go for one packet per second or 100 packets per second again here you want to go for higher per packet rate because each of this packet is going to trigger the processing and you want to maximize this processing thereby you have to go for more number of packets per second and keep the min sized packets so that you can maximize your overall rate by the way all this explanation is assuming that the attacker is maybe connected to this 1 kbps link and he wants to make the best use of this link in which case if he wants to target the link of the victim which is the popular website he has to do this and if he wants to target the process in the victim that is the popular website he has to do this so how to defend so if the attacker is continuously bombarding the server using the same ip address then potentially you can put a filter that will say all packets from this particular ip address should be dropped this works well when you are targeting the process that way you can drop all these packets before they are being handled by the process but spoofing is very easy in the internet what if attacker is spoofing different source ip addresses so he is doing ip1 ip2 and there is no fixed pattern for you to do the filter because if you did some wrong filter your genuine users are also going to get dropped which you as a website would not want in other words you cannot distinguish between the packets of genuine users versus the attackers so it's not easy to come up with a filter so here as i said not much can be done by the target which is the victim which is the website in this particular case but if this attacker is spoofing ip addresses which i briefly mentioned earlier so there is this attacker who is taking service from some isp and there is a router of this particular isp and this attacker is spoofing an ip address that does not belong in this domain it belongs to some other network which is not the network corresponding to this isp then this router can potentially drop this particular packet because the source address does not match the ip addresses this router is supposed to serve this goes by the name of ingress filtering but not all isps do this type of uh, filtering in which case you can slip through suppose isps do indeed do this ingress filtering what can an attacker do to circumvent that right attacker can launch the dos attack from compromised machines in other words so this machine the attacker hacked and he is using his genuine source ip address in which case these routers will allow them because the source ip address is a valid address then what can you do then it becomes a cat and mouse game in other words you see how many compromised machines are required to launch this attack and try to make it very large but this may not always be possible in general this is not a level playing field attacking often takes lot less effort than defending so with this background you should understand that dos is a very tough problem to solve even to this day periodically denial of service attacks are routinely launched with some ad hoc defenses put in place to thwart those attacks
so with that background let's now look at dos attacks at different layers of the protocol stack as well as solutions to the same